You may know Gary from his murals around Portland or from his joy bots, those small iconic robots that look happy and inspire joy. Gary Hirsch is more than an artist. He helps organiza organizations generate new ideas and it will help inspire us to think outside of the bot. Wink, wink. Gary Hirsch. So uh, I think it's appropriate. This is going to be the audience participation part of this whole thing. Uh, and I was totally inspired by Katie, uh, this idea of identifying who you are. So I'll, we'll try this. Uh, how many of you like to make things? Just make things. So that could be art, it could be music, it could be writing, poetry, dance. Excellent. Uh, how many of you then consider yourself an artist, those you like to make things? Uh, if you put your hand down for any reason, just practice putting it back up. If you make things, thank you, you can put them down. It would be weird if you had them up the entire time I was presenting. Uh, here's what I think. I think if you make something and put it out into the world, I think you can. You're allowed to call yourself an artist. That's what I think. Other people have argued that with me, um, and we can argue that in the lobby. Uh, the things that I like to make, I like to make art. I like to make visual art, and I am so blessed that I get to do that in my life. And I also like to make stories. And primarily I do that using improvisation. So making up stories on the fly in front of people. And I'm also blessed to be able to take that same idea and I use that in organizations. Look at the way the behaviors that improvisers use and bring them into the business world. That's kind of what I get to do in my life. And it's really, really cool. The thing is, is that the only way that I can do all of those things is by learning how to let go. Let go of ideas, let go of assumptions, let go of things that I think about the world and explore with them. And I want to try to do that with you right now. So, oh, the press buttons as well. Let's see what happens when I do this. Yep, that's me. Uh, cool. Let's try this. I'd like you to think about this right now. Think about one of your favorites. Favorite what? Favorite anything, right? So something you like to do, that you like to eat, something you like to um, uh, think about. It doesn't really matter. On the count of three, this is the audience participation, part two, I want you to yell it out as loud as you can. What's one of your favorites? One, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic. I heard absolutely none of those. <laughs> those were amazing. I heard none of them. Uh, now, here's what I'd like you to do. You've just let go of that. You've put your favorite out into the world. I want you to try something else. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to take that favorite, turn to somebody next to you, and combine it with whatever their favorite is to come up with a product or service that does not actually exist in the world. So for example, uh, one of my favorites is a mango. I do love mango. Uh, and I'm just going to point to a vague area here. Just yell out one of your favorites down here. What did you yell out before? Anyone? What's that? Baking? Baking, great. So we could combine uh, mango and baking to come up with a huge chain of baked goods and uh, uh, baked goods stores, bakeries that only feature mango flavored baking products. Now, yeah, thank you. One person would come to it. That's great. <laughs> That's the idea. Turn to somebody next to you in the next 30 seconds until I whistle loudly. Come up with a new product or service, combining your favorites. Go. All right, I will pause you there and simply ask you, I want to hear some of these. Because this is usually where brilliance happens when people get together to make things. So just yell some out or raise your hand and I'll call on you if I can see you. Yeah, what do you got? Go ahead, yep. Uh, what kind of drawing a line of baking goods? Is that what I heard? Great, so it's a whole series of art exhibitions just about muffins, I understand. Perfect. Uh, yes, in the back. Go ahead, sir. No, sorry, that was you. I can't really see what I'm doing. Yes, go ahead. Of course. 
a solar power phone combining the phone and sunshine. If that doesn't exist already, that's crazy. It totally should exist. Uh, one more. One more that you'd like to share. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I see. So it's, a, it's about mango lemon ice cream. No matter what it is, it has to be those flavors. Understood. When you take things and combine them together, especially things that have never been combined before, you are doing something I think is a little magical. I do believe that every creative act involves letting go of something. When you played this game, you simply thought of something that was about you. And that was just in your head until you yelled it out. Then you let it out into the world. Then you allowed yourself to be a bit vulnerable. You shared that with someone else and combined it to create something new. And I've been a bit obsessed with this idea how you let go of ideas to make them better, to invite the world in to play with you. And I've been obsessed for a long time. So here's a bit of a story. It's a story about when I was much, much younger. When I was small, I would have these sort of ongoing nightmares these things that would just terrify me. I'd be asleep in bed, but I'd be dreaming that a monster would break into my room and eat me whole and swallow me, and inside of its belly would be a cemetery, I'd be chased by zombies. I mean, it was, it was these terrible dreams. And so my dad would help me out. I would go into my parents' room, and I'd, I'd sort of knock on the door, and I'd say, I'm having these nightmares, and he'd say, come on, let's go. And we'd go down to the kitchen, and he'd pick me up. I was small, he could do it. He'd put me on a stool, and he'd put in some toast, and then got out the cinnamon and sugar, because cinnamon toast was my favorite. And while he was making that, he said to me, why don't you draw these nightmares, these things that you're so scared of? I want to see them. And so I did. And these are them. My parents saved my drawings. So if you leave with nothing from this speech, parents, just save your kids' drawings. It's really important. So they saved my work, and I get to see them now. And these are the things that I drew. And I wasn't just sitting there drawing them, I was having a relationship with my dad at the time where we would co-create these things. I would draw them and he would name them, or then I would tell him the name of things and he would help me. So this one is just, this, this is Tooth Monster, for obvious reasons. Um, this one, you can see his little sort of, this is my dad's handwriting on the side. This is Lamp Post Monster. We were literal, very literal family. Uh, my dad didn't get to avoid this either. This was a, my portrait of him as being a monster. So we would do this night after night. And then one day, and this is something I really do remember well. And by the way, my dad, he's not like sort of a, a psychologist. He doesn't study sort of child development. He just had this idea. He said, I have an idea. Why don't you take these drawings and this pencil and turn it around this time? And instead of drawing your monsters, why don't you erase them? And so I started to erase my monsters. And slowly, night after night, I got to a point where those nightmares went away. They were gone. But this act of letting go of my ideas, allowing my dad to take them and work with me with them, really stuck with me, as did monsters. So I just kept drawing them. I've been drawing them my entire life. These monsters just keep coming out every time. More monsters. This is a painting that I did uh, a few years ago as part of an exhibition where I really wanted to practice this idea of letting go. So I put all these paintings up on the wall and I didn't name any of them, no names. Instead, I invited the audience to take little post-it notes and put their own interpretation of the title around the bits of work, the pieces of work. And this one as an example is something that I was really looking for. When you let go of something and allow your audience in, they can make something even better than you can. So I didn't know what this was called, but someone put a post-it note up that I just fell in love with and decided to call this painting instead, which was Gluten Intolerance. <laughs> which is awesome, and that reaction you just had is the one I had. And so when you let go of something, if you make something, you don't have to control it all the time. So I kept experimenting with this idea, and this is where the robot sort of started. I created a notebook where I just drew this little doodle, and it says, um, you know, imagine that you go through life your entire day with a, a giant invisible robot that follows you around and gives you outrageous compliments. And he's saying, nice pants to this kid. Uh, and I'd sent this notebook out to my clients as part of something I was giving them. And weirdly enough, people started to call me up and saying, oh, 
you can't believe what my robot has been telling me today. And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, that prompt in the book, it works. Like, I really now do have an invisible robot. And it told me I was really smart, and I went to a really good meeting, and I really did well. I was like, this isn't, well, weird and crazy, but let's try this. So I decided to make the robot. So the robot is simply, and I have an example of one. This is just a domino, a little domino. And I drew a little robot on it. Uh, this one in my hand here is uh, robot number 39,886. So I don't really have a life. I just sit around and draw, draw these little things. But I tried to play with these things. Said, what could we do with a little robot on a domino that could practice this idea of letting go? So the first thing I did was I just drew bunches of them. And then I started leaving them around streets all over the world, wherever I would go. And these are little joy bots. And these joy bots, if you find one, it's got a little URL. And if you go there online, it would say, uh, take a picture of something that brings you joy and then leave it for someone else to find. Send the photo up to this hashtag of bot joy and let's create a little community and discover what gives the world joy, really. And so I did and I left them. And here's an example. I left it on this little signpost and then someone found it with this cushy uh, hippo. They took a picture of it, sent it to me, then left it out. Someone else in Sacramento found it with their cat. This robot is moving around the world as people take picture and record their own joy. This is another one. This is one I left here in Portland. This is Taylor. He loves his skateboard, so he decided to document it with his joy bot. It's very sweet. I made love bots and brave bots and advice bots. Um, I started to make huge installations of these bots. And what I realized is I thought to myself, well, where can these things help? They seem helpful. So I thought, what about a children's hospital? So donated these to uh, Randall Children's Hospital as well as Dornbecker here. And these are little brave bots. This is Ava. She's a, a patient who got one of these. Um, and these basically just stay with you. And when you need some courage, they just tell you something that'll help, sort of help you build your bravery. So she uses this now when she has to give herself her insulin injections. And it helps. It allows it to, to, to happen. And, and, and it's just a piece of plastic. But it allows people to have a conversation with themselves. I started making them bigger. So these are giant robot murals that have little questions that are posed on them. Again, finding ways to let go of your art and invite your audience in. So people answer these questions. Who do you love? What brings you joy? And they use this hashtag botjoy to take a photo of themselves and answer it. So again, it starts to build this sort of online community that answers the questions, give you a snapshot of what people are thinking and care about. What brings you joy? What advice do you have? This is one I just finished down in Southeast Portland. So this exploration of how letting go helps is something I'm really interested in. So lastly, I realized I can't do this alone. I kept getting thousands and thousands of, re of requests for more bots. Can you donate them here? Can you give us there? So two years ago, I think I did my most important part of letting go, is, which is I let go of the idea completely. And I invited the world to steal the idea of making these little bots. I said, here's a video on my website. You can learn how to do it yourself. You don't really even need me. Um, and that was a little hard, you know, we all have egos, uh, and it was a fun, amazing experiment. Um, thousands of people have taken me up on this idea, and these are just a, a micro set of the examples. There's stu students in California that are making writer's block bots that at the time they sent to J.K. Rowling to help her write, finish Harry Potter, for God's sake. Um, she, she could still use a few, I would think. Uh, uh, they sent adventure bots to NASA to help them feel more adventurous when they got up there. They thought about who in their community has a need and then what they could do to help and what kind of bot could help. So there's kind bots, there's love bots that are being made by people I have no idea who they are. I just check in online every time and I can see uh, using the hashtag. So lastly, I think with this, you have to be careful when you invite the world to steal your idea. These are real artists. These are artists from Japan and Madrid and from London who make art for a living. They're well known in their communities and they're like, I want to make these too. And I got a little nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, you, okay, yes, you can. That's awesome. So it, sometimes it takes a moment for you to realize this is what is uh, needed, as it were. So I want you to practice now letting go. Final piece here. And that's why you have a piece of paper and a pen that you got. So why don't you access that for a second and I'll tell you what to do with it. Here's what I'd like you to do, it says so. I want you to let go of an idea instead of holding on to it. In particular, I'd like to let you let go of a piece of advice. So what's a piece of advice you have in your brain that you think could help somebody else in this room? It could be anything. You've heard a ton of it already up here from Wilson and from Mike and from Katie, some amazing pieces of advice. But how about for you? 
what's something you think would be helpful to somebody else in this room? I will give you 15 seconds of uninterrupted writing time to first write that down right now as big as you can on that sheet of paper. Go. All right. It's okay if you're still writing. Here's what's going to happen next, which might just totally freak you out. In a moment, take the sheet of paper that you've written on and ball it up into the nicest snowball you possibly can. Not too tight, just a snowball of this nature. I'm going to walk now in front of the screen. I hope that's okay, technical folks. Uh, wow, it's totally blinding. Here's what I like to do. I'm going to split the auditorium right in half. So uh, if you're on this side of my hand, you're on this side. If you can't figure it out, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But right here, I'm going to split the auditorium. And now here's where it gets totally nuts. In a moment, not quite yet, on the count of three, I want to invite you to have a snowball fight with the other side of the auditorium. Not yet. As soon as you throw it, pick up another one that comes to you and back and forth and we will do that until I whistle shrilly and obnoxiously and give you your next step. One, two, three, go! Keep going, pick him up, throw him, pick him up, throw him, pick him up, throw him. <laughs> okay. Step three, stop throwing, pick one up that's not yours, and, or grab a few and give them to other people that don't actually have one. So get them redistributed throughout, throughout the auditorium, redistributed. Awesome. And when you get yours, open it up and read it. If you don't have one, raise your hand, someone will get one to you. Awesome. There should be enough for everybody because you all did one. So go ahead and grab a seat and we'll finish up. Let's hear a few of these and then we'll go to break. Uh, can we hear a few from you guys? You want to raise your hand and we can hear one? Yeah, go ahead. We'll grab your attention, thanks. Go ahead. Take an idea and create as many possibilities as you can with it. Excellent. Sure, one more. Meet yourself. Be yourself or meet yourself. Here's what I'd like to ask you to do before we go to break. I'll be passing it off to our MC and then we'll go to a real official break. Two things. One, share your new idea with people you don't know at this break. Hold it up, have a conversation. Two, I'd like to invite you to give the gift of letting go around inspiration. As you exit for the break, not quite yet, but as you exit, there'll be uh, uh, ushers sitting there with a bag. And in that bag are one of two things. One would be one of uh, uh, inspiration bot that I have made. You may reach in and grab that. If you get it, here's the deal. It's not yours. You have to give it to someone else who inspires you and invite them to do the same. These things move on on their own. You might also reach in and get something completely different. You might get a blank domino, which I think is even a big, bigger gift. It invites you to make your own inspiration bot and start this process as well. So remember, let go smash things together, and please inspire others. Thank you.